they're simply wanting to negotiate for our land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you can imagine, this is a multi-agency endeavor. Um, many agencies, public and private, um, working together on this. Um, we have um, our county councils that are involved in this and working with um, the SF uh, Public Utilities Commission, um, helping to come up with the draft um, MOU that we will then um, make specific for us and for our agency. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of different agencies involved in this, both in the permitting as well as the planning. Question about the cleanliness of the water. How is it filtered? Um, mm -hmm. explain, would you be able to explain that? The, the water is very high quality. The groundwater in Daly City and in this west, greater west side basin is high quality, needs very little treatment. Um, it's disinfected to meet state standards. Um, but, uh, and some of the utilities to the south do manganese removal, which is a naturally occurring mineral that's not needed here in Daly City. So other than, uh, and then florid, it'll be fluoridated. Um, so other than that, those, those are the only two treatments that are required. I had a question. I think you answered that, but the question that was in my mind when I was looking at this was how, you know, it, it talks about banking the water, putting it, putting it in, and you're saying simply by, by transferring so that they're using the wells less when there is ample water in the Hetch Hetchy so, and surface water system and not tapping it then is how it would, how it would bank that water? Correct. Yeah, as Correct. opposed to some way of creating more, you know, run up more, more water into the storage. Right, yeah, right. So Other utilities sometimes inject the water or use spreading ponds, uh -huh. but this is even a more a simpler way of just having, reducing pumping during normal and wet years lets the natural recharge right. that builds up in the basin oh, just to let okay. that accrue, gotcha. and then that can be stored for recovery in the dry years. Okay. Yeah, because I know there have been issues in the past with the amount of pumping out for the um, golf courses, especially at, at Lake Merced, that has negatively impacted that aquifer. Mm -hmm. So that seems like that's it's crucial that that obviously is as a vital part of your plan is that you get those people off of the <laughs> the pumps and the wells during wet seasons. Mm -hmm. um, okay. 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 <laughs> oh, I, I, I do have one. Good question. evening, honorable chair, members of the uh, school board of directors, Patrick Sweetland, director of Daly City Department of Water and Wastewater Resources, uh, Chair Douglas. That's why they went to recycled water back in 2005. Right. The city council's public policy toward the West Side Basin Aquifer has been to preserve it for municipal drinking water purposes. Mm -hmm. So by getting the golf courses off the aquifer, that frees it up. As Greg pointed out, we have been. Uh, this is not our first rodeo, if you will, with regard to the conjunctive use. Uh, this is not a good year to talk about available surface water supply, but we have been banking the water since 2003. Okay. So when you look and see Greg's intent to get over 60,000 acre feet of water, uh, to date we're about 40 percent there. Okay. We have 20,000 acre feet of water stored within the basin when we've been able to go off the wells use more of the hatchy supply and then bank that water. Uh, the quality of water is frankly excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, basically all we are doing is the water will go, um, as you can see from, some, from, the, from the well, it will then enter into the existing Daly City facilities and actually be pumped at the Westlake Pump Station, which is to the east of Ben Franklin School. Right. Yeah. So the water will go in and then from that portion it will be treated. Uh, when we say treated, uh, basically, the water comes into a sump and it basically is fluoridated to match the water we're getting already that's fluoridated and then chloraminated and then sent out the distribution system. So with regard to San Mateo County's involvement, uh, the real involvement with the State Department of Public Health. They'll be issuing the permit based upon the water quality. Yeah. Uh, San Mateo County may have an oversight because it is in the county, yeah. uh, but then it goes into the distribution system that serves all of us. Uh, so we, you know, when I we'll say share. all of us, what's that? We'll share it with you. <laughs> you will? Yeah. That's so generous, Marie. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but basically the, the sharing aspect is Cal Water, which is serves the Broadmoor, also has its pumping stations down south of ours that will then bring up. And then with regard to the sharing of ours, we also have emergency interconnects between our respective Bradley Street. So if there is that emergency, it really doesn't make a lot of difference to the public what molecule of water comes from where, so long as it's there. Water. That's true. So, so when these pictures are, are like rectangular, that's just like the earth, you mean? 
It's just a it's cutaway. Not, it's not going to be something we can see. It's, it's underground. The well will be above ground because new looking. state requirements have oh. to have a well above ground. The wells no longer allow mm. below oh. ground. It has to be above grade. That's the new state requirements. Mm. Is that like the one you have already by Ben Franklin? Correct. Mm. So well, no, no. It's, it's, it's more like the well next to us at the Westlake pump station. Mm. This is not the first time we've been on school property pumping water. Yeah. You'll recall well three, which is to the north end, remains a monitoring well. Right. But that's the last of wells that could be placed below ground. Okay. They need to be now placed above ground to meet the state requirements. So will that be, a, how big is that well going to be on, on our school property? Well, the outline of the well itself is the fence line, 30. 20 by 30. 20 by 30 is the fenced enclosure. If you want to see what the well looks like, uh -huh. what we anticipate the well look like, just drive to the east side of the school to the Westlake pump station. You'll see the Westlake well. Oh, yeah, I've been there. And that's basically what you're, that's the infrastructure you're basically going to be seeing. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So when we're, um, our superintendent is putting together this MOU, um, what are we getting out of it? I mean, oh, we're, I know we're getting water, <laughs> but are, are we asking for money for, the use of the land, are we getting money for the use of the water? I don't really understand that part of it. Um, I think Ms. Kester can explain what some of the considerations are that we will uh, attempt to um, ensure are included, but if you want to touch on that. It doesn't those. have to be extensive. Yeah, I, I think just... we have a couple. <laughs> no, it, right. it's not like we're going to get this ongoing money. They're going to fix the track up. They're going right. to um, put a gate in and, and the road. And then in the MOA, we're making sure that it's not going to cost the district any money to do when they do this. And should the well be abandoned later on, that it needs to be put back to its original mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. So basically, we're um, there are you know some dress ups for us, some th with the track and such. Mm -hmm. But um, what we're doing is really protecting the district and making sure that the maintenance and um, the insurance and everything would be covered by them and that there would be no cost to the district. All right, thanks. And as for the use of the land, that's our, part of our community service. And also to avoid an imminent domain. Right. <laughs> Shame on you. Yeah. We can either let them use it or they'll use it. Okay, so the... <laughs> Which we may get money for doing it's it that right. way, but yeah. it's better oh, to be friendly. The, that pump station, what, is that what you call a pump the station? The Wesley Pump Station. Yeah, that's right down there. Is the other one that you're going to be building, the new one, is it going to be at that same level over? Well, what's being planned here is as described, you're, you're basically taking where a well used to be on the north end of your property, uh -huh. is moving it to the south end of the property on a level ground. Mm -hmm. And then you have pertinences and the piping and the valving will basically connect to the Daly City existing uh, you know, easements that we have to go around the building. Uh -huh. Okay, that's where it's going to get, you know, that's where the water is going to get pumped into our facilities and then transferred into the Westlake pump station. It goes into a sump. The sump is where we do the treatment. And after the treatment, that's where it gets pumped out in the distribution system. Okay. So does that in any way going to affect the area on um, Wildwood and Ellis where Daily City owns a house there that's... Will not, the, this won't project be, will not. There yeah. won't be any going in out of there or... No, no. The water actually okay. goes out behind the... No, not the water. The People. Like trucks. It's on Park Plaza. No. It's going to come on the other side. Be on our side. Thank you. <laughs> we have to protect those people over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Through other really questions, through your staff, through our department, we're happy. We've been in partnership now since 1996 within this base. And so this is a good stage to be at. We're actually going to be serving the public that we jointly serve and address the water supply in California the way I think most people want us to. We're breaking down those barriers and being as efficient as we can. Yes. Thank you with your okay. assistance. Well, I want to thank you because I know you do a lot of work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for, for that. That was, that was illuminating. Very. OK. Interesting. And we'll keep moving right along here. I don't know our food service update. Mr. Hale, thank yeah, you for your patience. Awful lot of things tonight, don't we? We do. <laughs> and then we're so running about about that same 10 time. minutes behind schedule. <laughs> How much? 20? About 10 minutes. Oh. Looking forward to another um, slide deck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we do. Can I shut 
wish my presentation was exciting as <laughs> groundwater. Right? Well, um, water and food <clears throat> go together. As you say, without the food, the water is <laughs> inadequate. <laughs> and vice versa. Exactly. <laughs> so I want to thank you for inviting me to speak tonight. Um, I will try to move as quickly as possible. Um, I've got uh, had a lot more to talk about, but I tried to condense it down um, to just the kind of the pertinent things for this year. Um, I want to thank my supervisor, district manager from Aramark, Fred Ellis, uh, for being here tonight as well. Um, is it the, okay. Uh, so this year we had um, several things going on. Um, at the beginning of the year, Aramark was able to assist the district in the free and reduced enrollment campaign. Uh, we were able to uh, provide some funds to purchase some uh, raffle items, uh, iPads, Great America tickets, uh, tickets to Six Flags, uh, things like that to drive the application process for free and reduced uh, students. Uh, we were able to add, um, we had to add on-site heating and holding facilities at General Pershing. Uh, we were, we walked into this school year with an additional 40 meals. Uh, they had added two additional classes that we were not, um, we did not know about last year. So we are at the point where we were cooking down at the central kitchen and delivering the, the food. Now we are delivering the food and they're actually warming up and serving at uh, General Pershing. Uh, we're looking next year to add in a, another classroom there, so we will be um, certainly at, at the limits of being able to do it at the central kitchen and sending out hot foods. Uh, we were able to finish the painting with, at the multipurpose room at FDR. Um, it was a long process to, to get it done, but I think it, it really brightens up um, that room. Uh, it was the, the dark wood paneling. Uh, now it's got some nice bright, bright colors on it. Um, we had to say goodbye to one of our, uh, our food service clerk with Aramark, and we decided that we were going to replace that position with a food service assistant, which will allow me to have uh, more support out at the schools rather than just me being there. I have that assistant that can help with quality assurance, um, any site support that, that the schools would need. Um, we met with a lot of the frequent customers uh, for catering and we created some new menus that I think we kind of hit the edge of the same sandwiches, the same offerings. Um, so we, we took some input, uh, some requests and created a whole new, uh, a whole new menu. Uh, still providing a good quality product uh, lower than what you could find uh, outside. Um, since the school district is not allowed uh, by law to, to donate products, uh, food, things like that, Aramark was able to step in and we were, um, we were happy to support some local charities. Um, I mentioned the free and reduced application campaign uh, health and Wellness Fair, uh, some events with the Daily City Partnership, uh, Teacher Appreciation, Pancake Breakfasts, uh, to name a few. And uh, we were able to give the district back this year um, a monetary rebate in excess of $9,000 for manufacturer agreements that we have with Aramark um, that we purchase their products at the end of the year. We buy a certain amount. They're able to rebate us back. That goes directly to the to the school district. Um, this year was the year that the new regulations went into effect for breakfast. Um, obviously, last year it was the lunch. This year, it's it's breakfast. Um, we increased our hot entree offerings this year. We were doing one day a week on Wednesday last year. This year we were able to do it uh, two days a week. Uh, we anticipated that we would see some um, 
drop off of the participation with the new regulations. So we, we wanted to make sure that we, we had some new options uh, available. We eliminated the uh, sugary uh, cereals that we had talked about at the end of last school year. Um, some of those would be like Lucky Charms, Frosted Flakes, yeah. Captain Crunch, um, obviously the, the, the Yuck, perceived as, as sugar laden. Um, it's perceived as sugar laden. <laughs> I'm sorry, those it's are sugar laden. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> the the current breakfast cereals that we do use okay, all comply it? with the the state and federal Good. standards. What are they? Their standards. The cereals. Yeah, does not look if you know what it is. Rice Krispies, Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios, mm -hmm. uh, Corn nut. Flakes. <laughs> Off, offhand, those are okay. some of the ones that Good, I can Good, without all that sugary. Okay, thank you. Some of the new menu items that we were able to add for the breakfast program uh, were some mini pancakes, um, whole grain ultimate, breakfast rounds. Uh, we, we found a, a really nice beef sausage patty, uh, turkey sausage um, on, on a bagel, breakfast pizzas, and breakfast burritos. What is the ultimate breakfast round? <laughs> I think it's a, is it a bagel? It's a, a whole wheat, a whole grain. Bun like? Um, is that like an Almost like a, like a cookie, but it's a, it's not a cookie, it's a whole grain, right, okay. cinnamon flavored, actually pretty, pretty decent. A granola bar. What about yeah. breakfast pizza, what is that? Pizza? No, that's it. It's, we it's a whole, whole wheat. Dough, uh, cheese, turkey sausage. Um, I believe there's some scrambled egg on it as well. Oh, really? All right. <laughs> we we saw all that about at the, that um, the teachers training. beef sausage, beef and turkey sausage for that matter. And I know it gets very technical, but mm -hmm. with the population we have, we have a lot of Islamic students. And if the beef has pork casing, that excludes a lot of people from being able to eat that. We are very sensitive to the pork, um, pork uh, using pork products here. Uh, we <clears throat> try to stay away from all pork products. That's why I, I, I put beef sausage. Um, it's actually a, a beef sausage patty, uh -huh. not a traditional link sausage. Okay, beautiful. Okay. Um, so we're we're very conscious about, and we, and actually, I'll in some later slides I'll show you where we actually will indicate on the menu if it is a pork it's product. Pork. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for lunch, we uh, really started looking at our operations um, and in the, the time that it took the students to get through uh, the, the, the line. We started at some of our larger schools to change our procedures um, okay. to, to speed up the the collecting of you know, the names. Before it was, you'd, you'd have to ask the child their name, you'd type in their name. Yeah. It was really yeah. cumbersome. Uh, now we, got, uh, we have a system in which they come through by class, we flip into a book, there's a barcode, child just gives us a number. I'm number 20 in Smith's class, scan it, boom, move to the next one. Yeah. Um, it, it, it allowed us, on average, to save each meal period uh, anywhere from three to five minutes, which is, is pretty big considering how quickly you have to move those kids through mm -hmm. the line. Uh, Aramark this year came with a new, um, more robust quality assurance and food safety program, um, which we actually report on our internal um, internal measures and websites where we actually go out to the sites and we'll do these these quality assurance um, and food safety inspections, um, constant monitoring, making sure that the, the products are held at the right temperature, delivery logs are there, uh, chemical logs that, that the staff is trained and knows how to use different pieces of equipment, things like that. Um, we looked at the middle schools this year and refreshed the service flow bought some new um, service pieces to display the, the a la carte offerings at the middle schools. 
um, and just the overall operations. Uh, there was a, I, sh I wish I had some pictures to show you, but there was a, there was a <laughs> lot of cardboard boxes displaying our foods, and it oh. just, it, it drove me to the point where I, we, we have to do something here. <laughs> um, next year, obviously, the, the new standards come in that, that will implicate, um, will affect the, the a la carte program. So now's the time, let's refresh that, let's get the students ready for the new changes. Um, while we were doing that, we had the option of continuing to sell what we were selling and then make the change next year with the new regulations. We decided that it would make sense now to go ahead and start doing the um, new regulations this year as, as to what we were selling. Um, so all of the items that were, we were sold this year are going to be compliant next year. So I'm, I'm hoping that with the, the new regulations we won't see a huge drop off in our a la carte sales. Um, and, and we did more, with, with some of the new menu items, we did a lot more scratch cooking at the, the central kitchen. Um, marinating meats for two, three days, um, cooking from scratch, you know, cooking the, the pastas, cooking the rices, things like that. Um, and, and it just le lends to a much better product. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, some of the new menu items this year, we, we listened to the student uh, feedback, um, you know, Kids want the mac and cheese, so we, we've got mac and cheese on the menu. <laughs> Asian chicken and noodle bowl, um, Asian vegetable and noodle bowl, uh, grilled chicken alfredo, and vegetable alfredo. Those are all uh, very popular new items this year. Uh, the supper program. Uh, the supper program, we added some new items. Uh, lime cilantro chicken salad, build your own uh, pizza bagels, chicken dippers, uh, some Colby and Jack cheese sticks, broccoli slaw, assorted fruit cups. Uh, you, I'll talk a little bit about our plans for the supper program, but we've, we've kind of, we're at the point where we're doing a cold program and we're looking to add next year some hot entrees to, to increase some just excitement in the program. It can only serve so many sandwiches and cold items before it just becomes redundant. So the chicken dippers are cold too? Yeah. Um, for numbers, I, I wanted to show you uh, on the far right are, it's 2013-2014. Um, we I broke them down by free, reduced, paid, uh, and adult meals, and then I did the a la carte sales for breakfast and lunch underneath. Those are in dollars, the meals are in actual meals sold. Uh, as you can see, we, we dropped uh, a little bit in the breakfast, um, but we actually increased in our, our lunch sales. Um, and, it, and I <clears throat> wanted to show you the three years because it, it's important to see that last year we, we went, we had the, the lunch regulations and you can see from 2011, 12, the following year we dropped in lunch, um, but we went up in breakfast. So it, 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 I'm hoping next year, once the students are used to the new regulations, we can we will be able to get that uh, breakfast participation back up and it'll recover um, like it has this year with the lunch um, is it dinner for the after school program stuff or that's correct okay. so looking forward to 2014-15 we have the uh, new usda regulations coming in um, at the back of your packets are, is a very um, detailed uh, description of what the, the new regulations are. Um, makes it a little bit easier to understand. Um, the good news is that we're 
already doing that with the, the changes that we had made at the, at the middle school. So it should not affect us uh, tremendously next year. Um, breakfast program next year, I'd like to go from two days a week to three days serving hot food. Um, to be able, we're, we're also looking to do more on-site preparations, on-site being at the school. So setting up uh, where it's applicable um, smoothie bars for the students to come in and get a smoothie, um, some yogurt parfaits, things that we could build on site rather than trying to do them at the, the central kitchen. They just, you know, imagine a parfait in the back of a truck being delivered. It, it doesn't look very good by the time it gets to the school. So we're trying to, we're going to explore some ideas to, to do those on site. Um, for the hot items, some, um, you know, breakfast sandwiches, some um, whole grain wrap, um, you know, hot items. And um, being able to offer multiple, multiple selections, um, two or three options if possible. You know, we could offer a smoothie, we could offer a hot entree plus cereals or, or what not to give the kids more options uh, other than just one one selection. Um, we are Aramark is developing as we speak a farm to table program that I'd really like to bring here, where on our fresh bars, our you know, salad bars, we would have this this month's focus is this broccoli from this farm down in Salinas, and we can have you know a little write up on the menu where this product came from um, teach the you know had their their on the menus and the marketing flyers things like that that would talk about the health benefits of dark green leafy vegetables like broccoli um, but each each month have something like that that would tie back into the salad bar but also teaching about the nutritional standards um, of, of those things so look we, we're going to be looking to do that program um, in this upcoming year. We're also looking to do uh, hot su supper meals. I, I think we're at the point where, like I had mentioned earlier, they're just they're done with turkey sandwiches. They they need something a little more <laughs> more heartier. Um, and of course, to continue the um, point of sale service speed and, and really try to roll that program, uh, the best practices that we learned this year out to the other schools. And I will leave it open for questions. In, uh, I forgot to mention, in the back of those packets as, as well, there the are uh, sample menus for the elementary schools, the middle schools, and the supper program. Um, and you'll see examples of uh, the, our, most recent, our mo most recent menus. What's a strawberry bear? Pardon me? What's a strawberry bear? It's a waffle graham cracker. Oh, OK. Bear shaped like, well, shaped like a bear. Oh, just wondering. <laughs> it's not a real bear. I don't have little kids at home to, <laughs> who eat that stuff. So. <laughs> well, thank you. I think that looks thank you like much. we're making progress definitely in the right direction, particularly with improving the nutritional quality at breakfast. I'm very, very happy to see those yes. sugar cereals go. Yeah, and, and the, the challenge is, you know, finding the items that the kids will will want, um, yes. and not, and, and having variety. So making sure we have a, a good cycle menu that we're able to to offer products, um, not just because they're popular, but they're they're also healthy and they're not redundant. Right. And you must be doing something right with the mac and cheese because, boy, when I was in school, macaroni and cheese was like the school lunch meal that you ran and hid from. So you're doing something better if it's one the kids are asking for. <laughs> we, we've actually, um, it, it's funny, some of the responses on that particular product is that it's too cheesy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it's not the, 
it's not powdered. powdered cheese that you add water to, and that it's not th that particular brand. Right. This is actually real cheese. Right. Has to be real cheese. I've heard that complaint from my own children. <laughs> So they're, they're a little, you know, it'll take some time to, de to develop that palette. But thank so, you for letting me present that. tonight. Yeah, and thanks. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, I think it's just important for the board to recognize and the community to recognize that um, Aramark has been providing services now. This is their fourth year, I believe. And um, over this last four years, um, they've had to implement new regulations in different meals every year practically we had lunch mm -hmm. a couple of years ago we had breakfast this year um, supper next year snacks a la carte, um, additional fruits and vegetables and and um, you know every year they've made it work they've worked with us they've worked with our students to try to create a menu that is attractive and that students will want to eat and um, or purchase or, or come in and get and I think it's been challenging for everybody, but I think Aramark has approached that challenge and um, really um, has been able to do a far better job than I think we could have done on our own. Their expertise that they have across the nation, these are national standards, and so they're able, <laughs> able to sort of rely on sort of their national menu bank and to say, here's what's happening across the country and let's, this might work um, well for our area. And I'm sure that the, these Asian vegetable salads and, and uh, offerings that are very popular in Daly City, you know, are, can be used in Wisconsin too. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so when do we get to sample some of these menu items? Um, <laughs> well, 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 let's see. If we can work something out for maybe our um, some of our all-day board retreats. We maybe we get uh, <laughs> okay. get food service to cater those <laughs> instead of uh, honey baked ham. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have done that yeah, before. We then sampled, had them bring us exactly what the kids get. That's yes. true. Um, that as good. I recall, we found that they were skimpy for grown adults. Yeah. <laughs> we, wanted two, we wanted to eat two lunches. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're also, of course, welcome to go to school and buy lunch like yeah, any true. of the teachers. Um, oh, okay. That's true. Obviously not right now because school's out. I'll send you a menu um, when school starts so you know which day to visit. <laughs> okay. I like that. And you can report back to the board for those of us who are less courageous. I mean, <laughs> okay. Where are we here? Item six. Six. There we go. Item, yeah, I was just saying, I, gotta, I turned the page and then I'm lost. Um, the item six is the renewal of our agreement with Aramark for their consulting management services of the food service operation. As Mr. Vidal says, they've been working with us for four years now, and it is time for the annual renewal of their contract if we're going to do so I'd like to make a mo oh. I did call oh I did call and I want to thank Julie for giving me some of the information because I wanted to know what was different about the contract at, at all because I didn't have one to compare and so she gave me the information and I think she's going to share that with all of you too yeah okay so um, the contract follows the the original contract and so this is a, the fourth addendum and basically the original contract each year could go up by CPI. There's a fixed meal price, so every meal that they serve, that's how we determine what we're going to pay them. It's just a multiplier. Oh. And um, that, that price can go up by CPI each year, and so they've increased it by 2.2%. And after I like, reviewed it, it looks like it's really 2.4%. Mm -hmm. um, the the increase is 2.2 percent. The guarantee is still a maximum of a hundred thousand dollar guarantee, um, instead of on the profit, which is scheduled to be approximately five thousand nine hundred dollars. It's going to be a break even. Uh, last year, um, I gave a leeway of a one percent leeway, which was a seventeen thousand dollar leeway because I pushed them up to um, project more than um, they wanted. I wanted the projections higher, so I gave them a 1% leeway. That has been removed, and we've just made it at a break-even. It'll be break-even because of a considerable salary increase and benefits increase. And as you know, um, classified employees who work four hours or more get the full benefits. So the percentage of increase is a greater percent of the salaries there. Um, so other than that, the contract is the same. Um, those are the only changes, and um, I do recommend that we move forward with them. I have been very happy with um, Jeff's work and his uh, dedication, 
in his communication with me. I also want to thank you for uh, furnishing so much of the food for the um, day that we were, um, the Common Core day that we were training parents and teachers and everything. And he brought a lot of stuff. So thank you. That, that was a, a plus. Didn't have to beg all over. <laughs> One of our charities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're the, we're the charity. <laughs> um, were there any other questions before we entertain a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Otai. <laughs> I have a motion to renew the agreement with Aramark for consulting management services and food service operation for 2014-15. Second. second. <laughs> we have a tie on the second between <laughs> Mr. Waters and Mr. Ali. We'll give it to Mr. Waters. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. That was unanimous. Okay, we're making progress, gang. Oh, God, um, 25 minutes. Yeah, 2014-15 budget development presentation. Can you talk fast, Julie? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Please. Um, okay, so fast, fast back questions. in March, I was here with you, um, with Sandy, and giving you a presentation on the LCAP expenditures and such, and then the uh, second interim, which I included that in the um, multi-year projection, well, discussion of the multi-year projection. And, um, and then also the last board meeting, we had the governor's May revise. And so I presented that to you, and I, I told you about, like, um, to be prepared. And um, I, I feel very good about this budget. It was attached to the board agenda for the public hearing. Um, it is ready, and because um, there were no great changes, um, it will go forward as planned. Um, so the budget assumptions that we used um, were to include the COLA for each of the, the current year, which is actually going to be 0.86% now, um, but in, include the COLA and all the out years into the LCFF target again. The target is not what we're getting funded, but that's our target for getting funding. And then with the LCFF gap funding, that is where we are going to get the amount we're going to get towards that target. We went over that before. And I will show you another slide that actually shows our numbers with that gap funding for the current year. But um, it's a 28.05, um, and actually it's going to be 28.06. That will be $1 more per student. Um, and then in the out years, uh, we said we were doing it conservative, 7.8 and then 8.4 in the following two years. And those amounts are going to really, if the state um, follows through with what they said, it'll be 30.39% for 1516. It was supposed to be 33.95, but they've revised that down to 30.39. And in 1617, um, it was at 21.67. It's going to be at 19.5, according to what they um, they plan on. So as you can see, our multi-year projection is very, very conservative. Um, and then as for our ADA, we're using our current year P2, and we're considering that flat in the out years. That's also somewhat conservative. Um, and then our unduplicated student count for our, our supplemental and concentration grants are going to be nearly 74 um, percent. So and that's where those funds are coming from, and we're planning that in all the out years. There's no re reason really at this point to think that that would change. Um, and of course, as we have our campaign that Food Service has, um, Aramark has supported last year, I believe they're planning on supporting it <coughs> next year as well, with the prizes for um, the drawing um, for who would win from the campaign about getting everybody to apply for free and reduce whether they um, whether they qualify or not and of course we only only the ones that qualify will get it but we want everybody to apply because the few kids the extra kids that qualify in time to meet our seabeds date will increase our um, unduplicated student count um, included as well as step and column for all out years. And then included in this budget is a negotiated salary and benefits increase that um, we, we have just added to um, 
all of our salary schedules. So that would be for 1415, and of course that amount goes out into the future, but it's not increased in the future except for as it step and column is drawn on that. So um, after the 1415 increase, then it remains flat after that at this point, and we will negotiate that in the future. Um, and then the nice surprise that the governor gave us about the STIRS and the employer's contribution, as you know, the state and the employee contribution has also increased. Um, however, in our budget, we only budget for the district contribution increase. So in that budget is um, an increase from 8.25% of the current year to 9.5% uh, next year, and then in the out years, increasing um, by the amounts that the state is saying at this point we will be responsible for. So that will be included in, that is included in the budget, um, as well as the increase in PERS contribution by the, um, by the district. And as you know, out here, way out in 2020, 21, um, STIRS will go up to an increase for the district of 19.1% will be the district's contribution level and in PERS 20.1%. Um, but that's quite a, some years out and more than half of that increase will already have been accounted for. At this point here we'll be adding approximately $2 million to our budget, over $2 million to our budget and by the time we get out to 20 21 it will be 3.6 million that's added so we'll only be 1.6 million shy of fully funding the stirs and the PERS contributions now does that mean also Julie that the employees have to match the same amount no they're not matching that amount they have a um, on that last presentation so it is on online um, the employees for for PERS will remain the same for stirs um, they'll top out at 10 and a quarter percent for the um, employees that have been here s since before January 2013 and 9 point something percent um, for the, the newer employees. I think maybe 9.25, so 9.75, 9 9.17. I think that's what it is. So um, to go over the, um, L the LCFF, um, what the, first, we need to determine what the target is and what the gap is. So um, our target, um, including for our base grant amount, including our class size reduction, our um, TIG funds and our transportation funds, those two never get increased by the COLA. They will remain flat, is um, $46.5 million. And then we add the supplemental and concentration grants onto that, and these are based on our, our current ADA. Um, and these two combined are approximately $11 million. And that gives us our target for 1415 is $57.5 million. As I said, each year the target will be increased by the COLA. Um, and then we look at what our floor is. Our floor is our funding level that we are getting this current year. And so that's $39.5 million. Well, you just take one, you subtract it from the other, and you have our gap. What we're supposed to be getting, what we're getting, and the difference is $18 million. That's our gap. So um, the, then it's what, what are we going to get for 14, 15 year? Well, we're going to get 28.05, actually 28.06, but the budget's going to show 28.05. Um, we will revise it later on, uh, provided legislature actually passes this the way it is. We'll do it whatever they pass it at. So the 28.05% of this gap will be funded. So 28.05% of $18 million is the $5 million. That's going to be um, combined of the concentration, supplemental, and uh, base grant all together. So that comes into this amount. So we add it to the $39 million, we'll get $44.5 million. Um, and that is what is in this budget. Um, Go back to that for a second. Of that 44 and a half million, um, we're categorizing 36.8 million as base grant monies, and 7.7 .7 million as um, supplemental and concentration grant monies. Um, what that does, 
when we're fully funded and we're getting, if we were going to be fully funded this year and we were going to get the $11 million for concentration and supplemental grant, that is 23.77% additional funds above the base grant amount. Um, they have what's called the MPP, which is min Minimum Proportionality Percentage. What that means, and, and that's what that 23.77% is. So in other words, for every dollar that we spend on regular education at the base level, we have to spend another 23.77% um, or cents with supplemental um, expenditures for the supplemental and concentration grant. So uh, and that's when we're, we'd be fully funded. So almost 24%, right? So um, if we spend $100 for the base, then we have to spend an additional $24 for the supplemental concentration. What we're doing this year, um, we, we would need to spend nearly 21%. The way we've got it broken out between the 36.8 million and the 7.7 .7 million for those two different areas, it would be 20.93 percent. We are spending well above that because that's what we talked about before that we're going to fund our, our supplemental services up front and wait for our funding to catch up. And that is why we're deficit spending and why we're deficit spending into the future as well as well as the fact that we're being very conservative as to the um, gap funding that we're expecting. Would it be okay not to call it deficit spending and just say that we're using, we're just using the strategically reserves? Strategically using reserves. Thank yeah, you. We, it's just to educate our children so now better. instead of making them wait. Yeah. yeah. So we that the younger kids you. can get that education today That's right. instead of waiting for those funds to come because yeah. we have the ability to spend reserves to support that now and not wait. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sounds so much better. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, okay, what are we doing? Uh, we're <laughs> saying we're spending those extra funds now, mm -hmm. and some of them are base funds, and some of them are, um, are uh, supplemental and concentration grant funds. So what we're doing with the base funds, and I think that each one of these deserves to be said. So I'm going to say each one here. Um, two full-time certificated librarians. This is yeah. being added. These are added services. Um, seven part-time library aides, classified library aides. Um, one resource technology teacher. One classified technology support position. Five custodians. One maintenance position. One maintenance utility position. One half additional teach prep day, which is an option, optional for the teachers that are coming back before <coughs> school starts. Five additional calendar days for the certificated administrators. Um, additional discretionary funds and technology reserve funds. Because we're investing a lot into technology, and we don't want everything to die at the same time, and we won't have the monies to replace them. So we want to build a reserve so that we can continuously